already have Dr. Batra here. We invite uh, both of you to for this fireside chat so that our viewers can benefit from your insights even more. Over to Thank you, you so much, uh, uh, It was really a pleasure to hear uh, Deepak talk about uh, the five key uh, rules, if I may use, or the five uh, you know pointers towards uh, digitally transforming any business. Uh, and as he rightly said, it starts from the top. It can be top down, it can be bottoms up, but if it starts from the top and it percolates down, then the middle management benefits because you know really people at the bottom, the millennials, the younger people are very, very uh, savvy when it comes to digital and they're naturally inclined to uh, doing everything to keep it going. Now let me, um, and Deepak again in the same, the Ed said that I hope either it inspires you or gives you a tool, you know, uh, it gives you some information to be able to get onto your digital transformation journey. Let me take up from his uh, talk itself. At the start, he talked about, Deepak, you talked about the fact that there should be a digital council, you know, uh, people who understand uh, how digital is transforming businesses and how the application of digital in every part of the business can yield superior business processes and business results. So how do you select the members of the digital council? Uh, sorry, I, I just lost the last few words. Just a question. I said, Deepak, you said you should have a digital council. I got, I got all that. Uh, what is the last? Yes. last so how do you select? How do you select who should be the member of the digital council? Yeah, so uh, so firstly, I think, you know, uh, uh, Anurag, these people will not know, uh, will not know enough about uh, digital to actually digitize the company. They'll have to be trained, they'll have to be taught, they'll have to go on learning tours, they'll have to do some use cases, they'll do some tests and pilots, right? But like I said, like I said there are three, four cornerstones to, this, to, to the to selection. Number one, it shouldn't be the leadership team, it should be one level below. That's when you're getting a whole sort of people in the organization and growth. Two, it has to be cross-functional because any digital any digital initiative that you touch, you realize will touch many more functions beyond that because of the connected nature of the solution. What is important is that this should be your top talent. What is important is that they should have learning agility. What is important is that they should be able to seamlessly collaborate between functions. According to me, these three, four are the cornerstones of, of selecting a team. What is not required is that they need to be super uh, knowledgeable about digital ways of an of a, of a advanced cutting edge digital enterprise. I don't think that's important. What's important is learning it. Fantastic. So you're saying people who understand businesses and who are curious mind are open to adopt digital uh, techniques and practices so that they can be implemented. Uh, so it can be possibly a mix of uh, you know, senior management and some people who really may be digital evangelists in the company uh, or may have come from an ecosystem where digital uh, usage or penetration would, was higher. So now let me go on to some of the other points that you make in your address. Uh, you know, yours is a traditional FMCG enterprise, right? Uh, and I know in your last conversation, you talked about the fact, uh, this was about 12 months back um, and we are 16 months into pandemic. Uh, you talked about how e-commerce in the chocolate segment, especially in your company, was not a big number. And you went on to the journey, and it's a number that is steadily growing uh, without getting into the uh, specific numbers. Clearly, um, e-commerce became part of, uh, you know, your own journey. Now, how, you know, while you talked about digital in the sense of digital transformation of businesses, and you said, you have to decide whether you need a chief digital officer or you need a chief data officer, right? Uh, both uh, digital and data go hand in hand. Now, tell me, um, in your organization, what have you done to be able to uh, bring the elements of digital data together and make sure that every business decision maker is a chief digital officer and also a chief data officer? You know, in every business you're dealing with data, whether it's supply chain management, whether it's marketing and acquisition of cust uh, customers, or uh, it is looking at uh, you know cost management through data that helps you look at where it can be optimized. So give a sense of what have you done in Mondelez to be able to, on the supply chain front, on the marketing front, 
and in terms of the internal operations, really transforming it digitally. And dare I say that transforming Mondelez into a digital enterprise. I mean, it's not it's not a digital enterprise in the classic definition, but uh, really moving on to that journey where you're digitally integrated in every function. Yeah, so I think I think great question, uh, Anurag. So let me try and uh, answer this in two parts. One is, you know, all these six examples that I gave you, the six use cases, right? Two and marketing is personalizing at scale, first party data. The second one was a GM example, that is, but we have started on that journey as well. So it's not yet in any full blown, uh, 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 it's not taken a full blown shape. But all the other five, except using first party data, I talked about personalizing at scale, I talked about using big data to expand distribution, using machine learning for perfect orders, augmented reality to shift line, or IoT connecting devices. So our guy, our shift supervisor could run a, a factory uh, on his home and on his laptop. All these are our use cases, which we have done. I'll, I'll talk about, that's the first part of the answer. The second part of the answer is, what then are the key elements which have worked for us in digitizing the enterprise? I think that's what we're getting at. So, so if I look at it, you know, first, Digital has to be baked into the business strategy. It can't be sitting in the periphery. It has to be seen as a driver of competitive advantage. And, and therefore, successful enterprises have a clear articulation of how, uh, how, how, say, how digital will transform their businesses. And, and not just in terms of projects and technologies, but also in terms of capabilities and ways of working. Now, for example, we are focusing on these three tasks, sales, marketing, and supply chain. And they have all been baked into us back then. Everything has tests and learns, everything has milestones, everything has costs, everything has got ROI. ROI is not perfect, but it is in the ballpark. In some cases, we get huge force multipliers, in some cases, we don't. But I think the, the leaving with the first thought saying it has to be a part of your strategy, it can't be on the periphery. Second is leaders need to walk the talk. And this is very difficult because, in at least in a conventional company, uh, while our leadership team, our average age is less than 45, but still, uh, not everybody is a millennial, right? Maybe now, at least I didn't grow up. Uh, and I, I believe the centennials and millennials have. So this is not a this is not a native skill. Skill it's not my native suit. So this is certain things which are acquired skills. So I appreciate that I'm not going to be the most most adroit at this. But the fact is, I cannot stay away from this. Now the business leaders need to have a bare minimum, or let's say, a business level appreciation of digital technologies. We don't need to be in awe of it. Neither need to need, need to treat this as a, a pariah, as a technical thing. I think. Uh, Leaders need to walk the talk. They are constantly learning and balancing outside in, inside out ideas, sponsoring initiatives, you know, uh, which bring in small wins. And I think that's very important, starting with small wins so that we get the encouragement and energy as leaders to say, yeah, it is working. And how do I sort of, you know, expand the team? And we have done this very well. So this uh, suggested order that I talked to you about, right? Giving the perfect order. It's something that we started. Version 1.0 was, let's just use historical data. What has he sold and what has he, what has he bought? And how could you inform your order better? Then we started saying, okay, let's look at 15 other stores who are similar types. Then we said, let's look for you know, big data outside the organization. So leaders working the talk is important. If you leave it for some, uh, only for the IT department to do it, it won't happen. The other big uh, element of success for us has been, you know, uh, uh, we, we need to build a culture for this entire thing. So, uh, and we need to build the skills. So I talked about capabilities, right? I talked about no code, no code. This is what you, say you can write something without knowing the, the, the how to code it in a, in, a, in a software language. The second one I talked about, which is certified around 20 people for OMC, is online marketers, people who are then trained on digital marketing. So, this is it's a lot of things coming together. It'll be difficult for me to now go at, uh, by every function and work, but if you get the theme, I think you know, it has to be part of strategy. Leaders need to lead it. We need to build the capabilities, we need to build the culture. Fantastic. Uh, one one of the things that I learned when I started my career, I was a software engineer before I went to is to what we used to call a killer app. I used to work on RDBMS. If there was uh, before Oracle, there was a RDBMS called Ingress. And they would say killer app, which means do something which is like a small proof of concept, get it going in the organization, and then scale it up across the organization. So, like you said, start with something that could be very basic and small, but then use it to kind of you know implement, you know, showcase the success of that to be able to get it assimilated on in the organization. Now, let me tell you, when you benchmark yourselves, when I say yourselves, I mean, really the, I talk of the organization Mondelez, Mondelez India. Uh, 
what are some of the organizations that are not in your sector but you look up to them and you look at what they do and in some way benefit and learn from it and implement that in mondelez india a lot of sectors uh, uh, and so even before that let me tell you that makes it two of us i started my career i'm also an electronics engineer i also started my career doing some source code right so in those days you wouldn't even know there's a chip called 8486 of motorola yes so we used to do some application and some system level software system level code writing in those so makes it two of us but the question that you ask is great so uh how should i reply to this uh which part of that that question uh, uh so basically i'm saying you look at companies beyond your domain yeah, so and I, learn from the best practices whether i mean for example i look at what amazon does it's a company that all of us look at uh, i may not be anywhere close to the scale there but there's still some inspiration you get from them um you look yeah. at you know technology companies yeah so so if i look at it like this you know so there are companies that we can learn outside of our domain take for example uh, uh, uh folks uh, like you know make my trip if you look at the way they have been able to use data customize the things they send to you this is how they understand your traveling needs and requirements right and or and or your vacation needs and requirements it's a great inspiration i'm sure they will be operating with hundreds of millions of consumer records so how do we get there in the next 3 to 5 years their their fundamental uh, uh, need to know the consumer is so that they can feed the right uh, uh, travel flight or you know, vacation uh, uh, bites and for us it could be to feed the right snacking insights or uh, or how do we replenish snacks at home or how do we snack at home so there's a lot that we could learn from that industry so item by item it could be different now the other industry that we could surely learn from or we actually need to partner with is let's say uh, google google analytics has got huge repertoire of information technology and capabilities right so uh, it is not that we need to learn from them i think we use them as a partners as a part of the entire journey likewise if you look at facebook instagram uh, 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 whatsapp i think that they got a they got a wonderful uh, set of tools the, the tools that you call killer apps right so which of them is one and and how do we partner them on social commerce is one of the things so uh, so when you want to learn you learn from certain companies for inspiration to you learn in a partner fashion so those are the two big things that come to my mind absolutely as you move forward you know we are in the mid of 2021 as we move forward into you know there will be a festive season hopefully hopefully i'm hoping there will be no third wave or at least we'll be more responsible in the way we conduct ourselves as well as the uh you know the administration would have a better grip but hopefully this diwali would be a better diwali and diwali is a good season for the product carrying that you are in uh right gifting uh usage of chocolates for everything and those months of september october november december are a very big months for your category right now what would you do differently i'm not asking you to reveal all your plans and uh but directionally and philosophically uh, what would you do differently in these uh, very important market months uh, than you did possibly two years back yeah so uh, like it started with that anurag while we may want to wish it away a wave three cannot be wished away today given that these are festive seasons they are very social in nature and uh, if we have large congregations or gatherings they can become super spread as right so in that context i think you know one of the things that we are preparing ourselves for is to say what if the wave strikes during diwali or just before that's a big season for us right it would mean we need to learn and adapt to running it very very differently than the way we are run so far so one thing that would happen then is a huge focus of consumers on the neighborhood stores and or e-commerce so how do i how do i prevent to this we sandwich this offer from zoomer so home delivery or contactless bundles to be one of the option that could be one of the considerations the second one could be once again we have seen this that in any kind of a of a outbreak i think uh, the the local district authorities are given with full powers to run the district and hence we need we, we start approaching business in india as not as a country but as 700 districts so in which district do we have what level of positivity so do i put my teams out of the market or the positivity is too high do i pull them back and we give them up or what we improvised on was a telecalling app or a telesales app so preparing ourselves for virtual selling 
on the team. Preparing ourselves for running our operations district by district. I can't say this is my strategy for the country, which means I need to skill the people who are, who are owning the districts on, on interacting with government officials, etc. Right? So accelerate this runs. So the big learning has been that if there is uh, anything that is here to stay, it is disruptions. So how do you still manage disruptions in this? How do you still manage running your business during disruptions would be the biggest one. Fantastic. I'll ask you my last question and let you go. Uh, I'm sure all of us think about the future while we try to be in the moment, be mindful of what we are doing, give it our best today. And, you know, uh, I know the planning cycles in COVID have become a little short term. And while we, and in every organization, there are people who are flowing for now and there are people who are flowing for future. Now, as a leader who leads such a big and venerable brand, uh, and such a large business. Uh, what are the mega trends you see happening over the next 12 to 18 months uh, whose green shoots you may have seen now? You talked about in your last answer, uh, looking at districts, uh, looking at home delivery, still while dealing with each other districts or cities or states in a unique way because the scenarios may be different. But what are some of the trends that the viewers uh, on this broadcast people today who are on this in the audience uh, can learn from what are the mega trends uh, that you can spot uh, now uh, which will become even bigger in the next 6 months 12 months 18 months yeah so there are three four themes which have got sort of you know uh, accentuated or accelerated because of new food so the first one is nesting at home there are host a lot of people who are spending significantly more time nesting at home now, this could mean a uh, 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 this could mean uh, uh, very different things to different companies or different portfolios. So if you have an out-of-home consumption portfolio, it's a disaster. But if you have an in-home portfolio, it's a brilliant one. So how do you balance your portfolio? It could be one big thing. The second bit is insecurity in terms of both, uh, or let's say insecurity, financial insecurity is becoming a bigger and a bigger concern because there's a whole lot of sectors which have got hit once and just coming back and got hit again. And hence, uh, jobs and, and hence financial insecurity is becoming big. And that has a huge uh, bearing on your portfolio. So we don't sell very expensive products, but we still do sell products ranging from 5 rupees to, to uh, 500 rupees. And hence, we do see gravitate, the consumers gravitating towards you know, uh, a smaller packs and low unit prices in product. The third thing that's happening is this entire worry on hygiene and safety. I'll follow these two words. Right? So it's not about health and wellness. Health and wellness is always a trend. But I think what's what really accentuated people's minds is hygiene and safety. Now, if you look at it, right, uh, uh, I would call hy hygiene, safety, and also immunity in that sense, right? So uh, because of the, the virulent nature of this uh, disease. So what it, we, we, uh, we did a smart thing in one week. We pivoted our farms to immunity farms because it had a great immunity fund. It has almost all the vitamins, iron, zinc, all that you need for immunity. And, and that's really resonated well with the, with the, with the, with the consumers. So there's been some very good traction for the brand. The other big thing that's happened with consumers is they are gravitating to brands with a purpose. And that's where, you know, Cadbury Dairy Milk, for example, standing for generosity and small acts of thank you and, 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 and uh, generous acts to humanity per se has been hugely helpful for us. This trend is not going away. So it's going to be around for some more time. Now, these are the consumer trends. We could talk about many more such consumer trends. The other trends are the digital trends, which we just talked about today. So tax got accelerated dramatically. The other big thing has, has got accelerated is this in the in the businesses, what kind of themes and what kind of culture and what kind of behaviors and what kind of uh, 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 um, attitudes your team need to have, right? And mindsets. So th those are the ones that have got really accentuated, but a lot more to come, but we're still Living the pandemic, we are not, it's not behind us. Absolutely. Uh, Deepak Ayer says we are living the pandemic. It's not behind us. Uh, we have to work on all scenarios. We have to work on digital transformation. I hope uh, his uh, six uh, case studies or uh, examples that he brought about help you uh, learn uh, how to transform your organization and your function digitally. Uh, the fact that uh, he talked about dealing with each district as a unique uh, um, scenario. Uh, I hope we don't need that, but clearly in the past few months we have needed that and who knows the future uh, would given have, would have given you a thinking matrix how to deal with it. And clearly he talked about 
how the chief data officer and the chief digital officer uh, need to collaborate. Sometimes it can be the same person. And I would read it as, uh, or hear it as, that everyone needs to be chief data officer. Everyone needs to be chief digital officer. So thank you, Mr. Ayer, for joining the Tech Month 2021, giving us your inputs, uh, telling us how you've done it at uh, Mondelez India, and especially the e-commerce business, which was a very small business, maybe 20 months back, is now a sizable part of your business. So uh, clearly, a lot of FMCG companies are looking at e-commerce in a big way, and uh, uh, especially in the gifting season, e-commerce will become even bigger. So my three takeaways are, one is uh, form a digital council of people who are capable of implementing that in their businesses, in their sub-businesses, in their department, and they are not necessarily people who are digital in their function, but people uh, who are open to learning and who are open to being better. Second is uh, really start with something small, uh, make sure it gets implemented, and then scale it up. And third is uh, clearly do scenario planning. We are still living the pandemic. We are not out of it. So sometimes uh, uh, today being better than yesterday lulls uh, us to believing that it would be exactly like that tomorrow, but not sure. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ayer, for talking to us. Uh, we wish you luck, and I'm sure uh, you'll continue to do well on your journey of digital transformation. God bless you. Thank you. Back to you, Kathy. Thank you, Anurag. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Batra, and thank you, uh, Mr. Ayer, for sharing those insights with all our viewers. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.